Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat. It's episode 48. I almost forgot English there. Joining me today is the one and only Ian Gibson. We don't have a third person because every single person I asked couldn't make it. But that's what I get for thinking I had booked it and then waking up this morning and realizing I didn't. Uh, so you're stuck with us um, to talk about the video games. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be wild. It's going to. You're you're in the splash zone, everybody. So get ready to get wet. Uh, oh, we're gonna. <laughs> sorry, I don't I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, it's been a wild week. I'm so. I've been on so many Zoom meetings. I'm just fried. Um, and it's not like like I can do some work oh. during Zoom meetings, but I mean to adjust the topic slightly. But like y'all zooming. We're Microsoft Teams, and I feel like Teams is not great, but it's better than Zoom. Oh, I like Zoom. Zoom's great. It's just like, it's just being on a call for multiple hours, two days in a row. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's tough. I was and, on like, I was on a call so long today that my headset died and I had to switch to <laughs> my phone. The other it was problem, like five hours straight. That's why I stopped using my AirPods for meetings because it kept happening and I'm too unreliable yeah. to charge them. So I was like, I'll just use the Max uh, microphone. The The other thing is um, there were people in the San Francisco office. So there were people in the office and people online. Oh, that's so was like, the worst. It was a little bad, but honestly, props to them. They did an amazing job. They had someone watching the online chat the whole time. We raised hands like... It was, that's good. it went, that's good. and nobody in the office was having side conversations. So it actually that's went good. That's really good. smoothly. I was, I was thinking of writing a message in our Slack being like, Hey, it's the first year I've been here. And that was, and I know this is probably the first year you've done this, but that was flawless as far yeah, as that, that was sort great. of stuff. So that's, not, that's good. That's good. It goes like that. Cause that can go very wrong. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I found myself doing, um, so I'll, not to jump the gun here, but I've been playing a lot of Game Boy games recently. And so I found myself mm -hmm. today looking at mods for Game Boy cases and Game Boys and stuff. So I have I have several Game Boys. I have a color. I have a couple uh, of these advances, and I have an Advance SP. Like well, I this said. is a podcast. Uh, I know. Uh. I know. <laughs> that's why I'm saying the full names. Video people get to see this. Podcast Should people tell. don't. I know you prepared to. for this. Um, actually, the box is literally right here because I was looking at stuff today. So anyways, I came across uh, like you can do screen mods and stuff. And then there's battery mods and shell mods. So regardless, um, that's cool. I have my AGS 101, which is the good backlit screen for Game Boy Advance SPs. But my other Game Boys, uh, the advances don't have any backlighting. And the other SP I have is a front light that's terrible uh and i think i'm gonna swap the screens out i was watching some comparison Ooh. videos today a it looks amazing it looks better than the 101 and mm -hmm. b the new screen and like the the motherboard clip and everything is like 50 bucks which yeah. really isn't that bad and then all in like if i wanted to buy a new shell new buttons uh, a new battery, new screen, it would probably, it would be less than $100. Um, That's not bad, because, like, a brand new SP, brand new, but isn't, buying a new used SP, I looked it up recently, it's, like, 150 It's too much. It's way too yeah. much. And the ones you don't want to buy for SP are cheaper, but you don't want to buy those ones. Um, yeah. But you could buy one for a screen mod. So I got really excited today, because I was like, oh, I should do, I think I'm going to do start doing some screen mods because I got three advances that I can mess up uh, and then yeah. an SP. Yeah. So I think I might do that. They also had a, I don't know how this company gets them. They must sh like shuck broken SPs, but uh, they had like the Famicom SP shell. And then mm -hmm. they had um, like uh, Famicom buttons. So it, it was like the multicolored buttons. And like well, they could be making purple their own. They were, they could be, but the ones that were, the reason I think they sh they shucked them, is uh, for the IPS screens. I think they're called. You have to shave down original kits because it oh, has to yeah. fit in there properly. And I figured if they were producing their own, they 
they have ones they produce their own that don't uh you don't yeah. need to shave down so i th- i think they are doing yeah. that which i mean honestly i would do that too um all this is culminating me into also stumbling into a guy who does uh explosion art with game boys i saw that i don't know if you looked at the price it is way too much to pay him to do it no offense but i would love to do that on my own that and also i i was trying to factor in how much i like obviously this guy buys broken stuff um but i was trying to factor in how much you would have to spend on broken things um whereas you could just do it with one of yours with one yeah. of yours that you're not using that's the thing because i realized I, I i should go back i realized his costs are high because I, I think like a gba advanced one was like 250 or something like that and then i realized oh he's probably spending 150 on the stuff alone and then totally. exploding it out from there so so his prices do make sense it's just a lot more than i'm willing to pay for it yeah so i think i that leads this entire conversation to some of my stuff i think i'm going to try to mod which will be fun and then mm-hmm. one of them i might do an explosion thing i think that'd look really cool that's cool so, yeah uh, yeah that's kind of uh i've been i've been game boy crazy and the reason i've been game boy crazy folks is because i have been playing a lot of game boy games i have been playing I'll start with uh, the hotness. I've been playing uh, Advance Wars, which is a very good game. Uh, for those, let of me you... ask you a question. Yes, I, I played the original, but you know I was a kid, so I was kind of messing around with it for a couple hours. I didn't take it too seriously. When it got any sort of difficult, I gave up. Um, does it hold up? You picking it up today? The original Game Boy Advance game does it hold up? Yes, I have been. I've been playing it pretty much awesome. every night um i i finally made it through the entire tutorial it's quite long because it's like a campaign that you fight and so now i'm yeah now i'm into the main game with andy um and i did my first mission of that last night and it it, it was really fun I, i like they like introduce a lot of things throughout the tutorial but then when you're in the maps you don't necessarily always have the conditions that they introduce you in the tutorial which is neat because i was by the end of the tutorial, I was like, oh, is every level going to be like this? But it, it's not that way. Um, yeah. So I, I've been having fun with it. Uh, I'll have more to report on when I play a lot more. But it's definitely held my attention enough that I've been playing it before bed every night and forgetting to read. Uh, so hey, that's the problem with the portable, portable console. Is I just, it's portable. It's, it's hella portable. It, it's also Anytime, great. Anywhere. Yeah, and it's great. Like I can sit on the couch and watch something and play it, and it's not nothing yeah. on the Game Boy is ever pressing enough that I can't pause it or something. You know? Um, yeah, I I've been thinking about going back to Advance Wars, and then that remake got announced. I'm sorry, remaster. I guess I would call it a remaster, right? Because yeah. they just it's uh, new res, new textures, and everything, but it's not quite a remake. They're not well, I don't change know. it fundamentally changing. Yeah, Um, but I have uh, the other thing I'm worried about, though, is I played Wargroove recently for about an hour, which is very similar. Um, And honestly, I I don't I didn't really like the system in Wargroove. And I'm afraid that it's too much like Advance Wars, and I'm not I I think I may not be a fan of that style of tactics game, you know, Mm. where you have units on a screen, you move them around a grid and then you do the the versus duel and you have the turn by turn that very particular advance wars style i'm afraid i may not be a fan but i i do think at some point i'm going to go back and give advance wars a shot yeah it's it's certainly been really fun um i more i like i started it thinking like oh i'll finally check this out and probably not play all of it i've been playing it a bunch um and then the other game i've been playing for our new series called poke will is uh about me eating poke bowls uh, I've been playing Pokemon Fire Red, uh, mm. which I hate to admit uh, in front of it. friends and family. Do it. But I, this also will make me look like an idiot. I never knew hey, about. Hey, 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 real quick, real quick. Cool your jets. You're only a couple hours into the game. This is a long game. I know. You could go back to hating Pokemon. Who know. knows? But but please continue. But, you know, don't come to a conclusion yet. You got yeah, a long way to you're go. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um. I never knew about catching Pokemon. And that's kind of crazy because the whole thing with Pokemon is basically what are you talking about? It's basically like catching them. That's like a whole yeah. thing. 
and which is crazy. I, look, I know look, I'm not taking you literally because I, I there's no possible way that you could be literal about this. No, what I'm was not it literal. Before? What was it before? before? Like, what was your concept and or memory and or use of Pokemon before? Before Pokemon in started? the before times, uh, before this yes. new normal for Pokemon, um, I would play it. And then I'd be like, oh, that guy's cool. And I, like, I would catch him. You know, you like get her, get them yeah. health low and you catch them. And then you're like, cool, I have this Pokemon now. But now, now I'm like, this is partly because I'm, as a rule in our game, I'm not allowed to continue forward. So I'm just backtracking and looking up all the Pokemon I can possibly catch in that area. And I've caught every Pokemon I can catch in the game right nice. now. Nice. I have put nice. the game down. I spent an hour trying to get a stupid Kakuna, uh, which had a 14% catch rate or uh, show up rate. Yet I kept getting Metapods that had a 4%. percent mm hmm uh, and I finally got a female Nidoran who have a, who has a one percent. Uh, oh, really? Thing. So, um, and so many Pikachu's that have five five percent. So I've caught every Pokemon so far. So I put the game down because there's literally nothing else, and I don't want to over level or something like that. Because uh, I actually looked it up, there's quite a ways until the next gym, so I don't want to accidentally do that. Uh, but I've been like catching them. And I'm like, now that I'm catching them in this way, I'm like, oh, I'm catching these guys to fill out my Pokedex. But I'm also looking at it and I'm like, oh, what is a what is your type good against? And what is what is that type good? Which also websites, I don't know if I'm just an idiot, but no. some of the ways the websites show what's good against what is so confusing. Yes, and some of the, some of them some of them make sense, like water is strong against fire. Some of them don't really make a lot of sense. So you have to memorize them versus like puzzle them out. And th that is that is the number one thing that pushed me back against Pokemon when I started playing Pokemon was all of a sudden having to know all of these types. And depending on which game you play, they don't surface it well at all. Even like the current Pokemon you're facing, what their type is in, in some of them, you can't even look it up while you're playing the game in the game so you have to do a reference for it and i love that strategic depth but they do not do a good enough job of surfacing it yeah and i also don't like bulb a bulb bulbpedia bulbapedia bulbapedia yeah is where i've been going i've actually been using the strategy wiki for for gameplay because I, I found it easier to read uh, and they also do this cool thing with each area. They show you all the Pokemon you can catch, and then they show you the number of Pokemon you should go catch. Like, hey, mm -hmm. go catch a Weedle. Yeah. He'll turn into this, and that'll be good in late game. Or go catch a Metapod. He'll turn into this, and that'll be good for you now. Like, that sort of yeah. stuff I like. Yeah. That's good. But the Bulbpedia, it has offensive and defensive types for each Pokemon. And then it has times two times one and a half for all the different types and i i'm like wait is this offensive yes. they're offensive or they're deep like what is and it's, it's just it's, a okay. terrible this, way of writing is, it yeah this is my understanding is it's when you attack a pokemon it is the type of the move you are using versus the type of of that Pokemon. Yeah. So I, I don't really think of it as offensive defensive. It's like, it's like, Hey, a flying move is very effective against a bug Pokemon, you know, whereas that bug Pokemon may not know any bug moves, but if it's a bug Pokemon, it's, it's weak to flying moves. Yeah. Um, I, and I, the other thing is I, what I found when I started playing Pokemon a while ago, I want to say like back in like 2013, 2014 was I found this big chart. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like a big chart and it's color coded and it, it's one of those charts where like the it has all like 10, 12 types or whatever across both axes. And then you just go like, OK, this type, this type, and you find it and it says like red for 2x, whatever. And that, I literally printed that out and I had that with me and that helped me a lot. Maybe I'll um, I 100 percent agree. The types can get confusing. There are so many types and it's really after playing games like Slay the Spire and Inscription and um monster train that do a fantastic job of if if there's a card and the card says like you know plus two damage every round if this happens you can hover over it or or click the card or whatever and boom 
definitions right there. This is exactly what this means. This means this means I would love for Pokemon to do that for you to be like, I have battled this Pokemon before. It's not my first time seeing them. So boom, this Pokemon is this type. And you know that because you've seen them before. And then you go over your move and it's like, this is going to stun. And then you'd hover over stun. And it says like stun is blah, 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 blah. Like there are so many, there's so much mechanical depth to Pokemon, which makes it a fantastic game, but they do a terrible job at surfacing all those definitions or even just Mm. like basic reminders of what does what. And, and I, I hate that upsets me as a gamer but what really pisses me off is this has happened to me and i will i will never do this to you will is that when i talked with friends about it and i said hey i'm enjoying pokemon but this types is confusing people were literally just like how do you not know the types what are you an idiot it's not that hard and it's just like you've been playing pokemon since you were a freaking three-year-old all right i'm just (laughs) hopping in the first time and this thing is horribly complicated on the mechanics and it's not servicing them and i have to keep looking it up they're like no you're just an idiot it's not that complicated it's like no it is and they need to do a better job of servicing that stuff you know it doesn't need to be in your face all the time but if i want to look into it a menu or two deep give me that info you know and it's just not there i um it's funny you saying that reminds me of a conscious choice i made i want to say in high school it might have been after high school which was pre this choice anytime someone hadn't heard of something or seen something or played something mm-hmm. i would always be like how have you not played that that's like you're not i wouldn't say you're yeah. stupid stuff so yeah. it's weird it's just i don't know why i'm talking about this you made me think of it but now when someone's like oh i haven't seen master and commander one of my favorite movies i, I just go oh you should watch that it's a great movie like i i i it's i got so sick of internet culture yeah. of people being like yeah you haven't seen that how could you not like that now anytime anything surprising like that happens i just go oh you you don't know that so i i, I know exactly what you're talking about because people yeah. have always done that with with pokemon in particular when i tell them i haven't played pokemon and they'll be like what you haven't played pokemon um, yeah just to be just clear to... i didn't do that to you when you told me you hadn't played pokemon i did that to That's you true. when you told me you didn't like pokemon and pokemon was stupid I Which mean, led to the Pokey Will series. That's true. That's true. Very true. <laughs> the slight um, difference. Very slight difference, but... <laughs> yes. So, long story short, uh, I'm excited to play more Pokemon. Uh, I, as of now, we're planning to do it... You know what? This I could Saturday do... at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sorry, I just remembered I could do it Friday. Um, I could do it Friday. So, I'm streaming for Extra Life uh, from 7 to 9. So You're could... streaming? I, I i'm i'm on a stream we're playing i oh, suggested okay. playing super uh mario superstars so uh i'm gonna join a stream on that uh it should be fun um, but, i uh, i don't mean to put this on you but if you wanted to stream five to seven or five to six i'd be down okay so you can't do after oh i can do after because i was thinking after that just do nine to whenever yeah, that into, works for me. Uh, the only reason is we. This is a little behind the scenes for everyone listening. We had talked about doing Sunday, but I'm getting my booster on Saturday, and I'm just afraid I'm gonna feel sick on Sunday. I That's don't fair. And the other thing that. is, folks, we're going to pack some plugs next weekend, which means no weekend stream next week. We're not doing a Thursday stream. Uh, we will have local chat on Wednesday. Basically, our schedule is kind of shot for the next week or two. And the problem is we just started this series. We want to strike while the iron's hot. We want to strike while yeah. Will wants to play Pokemon because he has to finish the whole game. So let's just get a chunk of it done. And uh, we're talking a lot about Pokemon, but it's a fun series. You guys should tune in. PokeWill just started. Yeah, it's great. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of been my journey with the Game Boy so far. Um the other nice thing about all that stuff being cheap is I put it all over my Amazon wish list for Christmas yeah. that my family does. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you know what? Just order me nonsense. Um, yep. because like there's a bunch of 3d printer upgrade stuff, game boy upgrade stuff, books, and that's all I ever want for Christmas. So, well, except for my two yep. front teeth, um, Ian Gibson, uh, yeah. Ian Janet Gibson, as I know you, uh, uh, uh-huh. What have That's you been... better than my real middle name. So, <laughs> what, what, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Final Fantasy VII Remake. We talked about this last week we were on, right? Because the week before, anyways, I'm sorry. 
uh we played some final fantasy 7 remake uh i'm sorry i've been playing a little <laughs> bit of it uh i'm probably four or five hours into the game now i i, I kind of have this conflict with this game which is like i talked about before i really enjoy playing this game but i mentioned it to you earlier i sit down i play this game for 30 45 minutes at a time and then i'm pretty much done for the day like it's it's such a it's it's such a fulfilling game that I play 30, 45 minutes of it and I go, yeah, that feels right. And then I turn the <laughs> PS5 off and it's weird. Like, I, I'm not sure I'm going to play this game anymore, honestly, because it's it's just so fulfilling, but it's not super drawing me in. And that is 100 percent me. That is not the game at all. And um, it's just kind of a weird experience. And so I f kind of feel this conflict where I'm like, well, if the game is good and I'm enjoying it, then I should play more. And there's a little bit of guilt of like, I feel like I'm doing the game a disservice. But at the same time, I'm not disrespecting the game. I respect you. You know, I'm saying only positive things about this game other than the god awful PS4 30 FPS and then the PS4 to <laughs> PS5 stupid upgrade path. But that's not you. That's not you, Square Enix. Um, but I'm just not playing it. The truth is, I look, well, I got to be honest with you. I haven't played this game since Saturday, which is what, four or five days ago. Wow. I I have picked up a different game. Oh, no. I picked it up on Sunday. Wait, you didn't write this I've on played, the list. I played 15 hours of it so far. I've been playing Pokemon Fire Red. No. On my, <laughs> yes. Yes. Look, here's what happened. All right. We've been talking about Pokemon for months. <laughs> and I was thinking about I've been wanting to play Pokemon for months. I was like, I'll get the, the Diamond Pearl remake. It turns out they're not that great. Also, they're like 50, 60 bucks. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it down. And then I, I booted up my 3DS on Sunday and I just magically had all these <laughs> games on it. <laughs> I was like, I, was like uh, I didn't know Pokemon Fire Red came out for the 3DS. That's wild. And I booted it up. And I sat on the couch and Maggie watched some documentary about a German serial killer. And I played Pokemon for six hours. And folks, it's a good game. I'm really enjoying Pokemon. Um, I don't want to rehash it too much. I just I I didn't want to tell you because I felt a little guilty. But then I realized it's a really good surprise. <laughs> I hate you. Um. The weird thing is, though, I uh, this is kind of like my Professor Layton moment from earlier this year where I played six hours of a Professor Layton game before <laughs> realizing I'd already played it. Um, I'm really good I at got, these like, puzzles. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, who knew a Professor Layton game could be so replayable <laughs> if you just put it down for like five, six years? Um. I went through this like five, six hours of this game before I realized I was like, wait, this, this feels very familiar. And then I remembered I played Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, which is a remake of Yellow, which is the exact same region. And it and kind of the same story as far as I can tell. So I'm still enjoying it. It's just I do have a bit of a gripe with the Pokemon series, which is it feels like not just in remakes, but also in like reboots but also like sequels they reuse a lot of regions and they don't really change it like i never knew yellow was that much the same as red and blue yeah um, you just get a pikachu at the beginning and they follow you around yeah it's just like i that's my one gripe is i feel like well i feel like people have this gripe with the pokemon series anyways is they have not oh thank you they have not um <laughs> i got a little present they have it's not audio podcast uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Here it is. It's a wheel for my robot vacuum. Um, anyways, uh, Pokemon's great. Guys, play some Pokemon. It's a lot of fun. I, I will say to Will, to other people, I am looking for, I think I'm going to finish Fire Red. I have about half the badges so far. I'm not sure if I'm going to do Elite Four or not. I think if I'm going to, I think I may play another Pokemon game after this. And I'm not sure if it's like Black or if it's black two, or if it's the original diamond pearl, or if it's platinum, I've heard platinum's good. I, I kind of want to play a DS or a 3DS one. Actually, not a 3DS one. I played both 3DS ones. So I'm like, I'm, I'm tell me what Pokemon game to play next. You played you know? Y? Yeah, I played Y. I played Sun. And uh, let's go <clears throat> Eevee a little bit. 
Yeah, I was so, trying to yeah. think. I was thinking of that too because I was already post planning. I was like, oh, what other Pokemon games should I play? And this is a little bit from the research I did too. So I think after this, I might play Ruby or Sapphire because I played those when I was a kid. Uh, those are GBA ones. Yeah. And then the only other ones a lot of people recommended was Black and White are very good. And then I, I feel like EXP share very early on is is a hard re- almost a hard requirement for me because I I don't want to grind too much. And even in Fire Red, I'm doing a decent amount of grinding. And you, you have to catch 50 Pokemon before you even unlock EXP share. And I'm not doing what you're doing, which is like trying to catch every Pokemon in every area. I'm 16, 17 hours in. I've only got like 30 Pokemon caught. So it's like I feel like by the time I get EXP share, I'm I'm already going to spend way too much time grinding. Yeah, so, let it be known. Know. I don't want to do that. I just it's the only thing I can do. And I want to keep playing the game. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, let's stop talking about Pokemon because yeah. we can talk about more of it next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say it's wild that your 3DS just has that because the Advance Wars I'm playing is the Wii U version, but I managed to cram that disc right into my virtual console, uh, right into my uh, Game Boy. So. What? Uh, Advance oh, Wars was the, on the, the virtual, Wii U virtual console. Yeah. So it, oh, the, the ROMs weird. I have specifically specify Wii U version, <laughs> gotcha. which is very funny gotcha, to gotcha. me. Um, yeah, it was surprising. I Look, I don't want to talk about it too much, but um, folks, it was very easy to do. I told and you. It's great. That's how I... It's uh, great. I, um, I mean, oh, you should play Dragon Quest Journey of the Cursed King. It's already on there. Oh, I may so start good. that after Pokemon. <laughs> I I may because game... originally I was like I was like I need a game to play while I'm traveling to and from PAX Unplugged and while I'm there I don't really feel like being in the Switch because it's a little bigger and oh. I don't have a good Switch game so I was like I was like uh, I'll crack this open I'll get some games on here maybe and I'll play and I'm I'm I, I'm good I'm ready to go let's stop talking about Pokemon this let's is not stop. a Pokecast um folks uh in in the news this week so Pokemon uh no. Um, so that's all the games we've been playing, which means it's time for me to play the news music, which, boy, can I just let you know how much we underestimated the length of that in the Thanksgiving episode. Uh, <laughs> we were, as Kyle said, we're about 30 seconds short, uh, which I think we're about oh, wow. 15 seconds short. Uh, yeah, it was wild. Okay, here we go. I'm going to play this. I forgot the beginning part. That's the problem. Here's the news. We're talking, talking about, about news. news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? I still marvel over how well that recorded. Um, folks, a lot of news this week, and by a lot of news, I mean not that much news. Um, it's funny how much news I receive nowadays in the gaming sphere, and do not. Uh, like I try to have the notes open and just paste it, but half the time I read the news, it's in the, uh, it's in my work news feed and they're in progress articles. So when I click on them, they technically mm-hmm. 404 cause I don't have website access. So I, and then you can't really link. So it. I read the yeah. headline and go, that's interesting. And then I forget about it. So I need to start yeah. checking the final, final web gamespot.com for all your news folks. Um, GameStop. Yes, game stuff. News and games. <sighs> curse. It's a curse. Uh, folks, a lot of news this week. Ian Gibson, anything you want to talk Hi. about? I started organizing this and then I said no. Um, it's just like, it, let's start with a funny one, which is uh, Battlefield 2042 has a mode called uh, Portal Mode. Uh, portal Mode is all about how you you can create your mode, custom rules, custom uh, weapons. They bring in weapons and vehicles and, and maps from older games like 1942 and Battlefield 3, I believe, and, and other stuff like that, Bad Company 2. Um, there is Portal. There's the normal Conquest mode and normal multiplayer modes. There's also their... I forget what it's called, Hazard Zone or something, which is their squad mode, kind of like a dark zone. It's it's just fallen flat. The whole game's fallen flat. Anyways, uh, they don't have a Battle Royale mode. They said it's not possible. It's going to be too hard. We're not going to do it. So somebody somebody went in to Portal mode and just made a custom Battle Royale inside of Battlefield 2042. This this is this is so hilarious. This is uh, this is from Christian Mueller, 
who is a self-described, quote, masochist who plays the PC version with the controller, unquote. He implemented some of these crazy workarounds. Um, you know how there's a circle in uh, Battlezone, right? So you can't you can't just have a circle on the map, but enemies show up on the map if they shoot. So his circle is just uh, 24 bots in the shape of a oh. circle <laughs> that show up on your map as enemies. So if you look at your map, you see a whole bunch of enemy icons in the shape of a circle and those teleport and move in as the match goes on. That's awesome. Um, there's no loot on there's There's kind of loot on the ground, but it doesn't work that great in Battlefield. Uh, honestly, like you're supposed to be able to pick up enemy guns. And for the first like three days that the game was out, you couldn't even do that, I believe. Uh, but anyways, um, there's loot, but you have to like it's random. It's a little spot on the ground. It's like I think it's just a generic icon or something. And when you go over it, it says loot here. And I think if you like crouch four times, then it gives you a random item. Uh, <laughs> That's incredible. It, folks, it has the gulag from Warzone. So if you die, you respawn somewhere else and have to fight somebody. And if you win, then you get back in the match. Um, the uh, You get to parachute into the map. And then the other crazy thing is because the, the game supports 128 players, 28 are the AI in the circle. This is a 100 player battle royale. There's also a pregame lobby. Um... It's it's insane. One of my favorite things was that um, the the bots that are around the fence, they he couldn't completely alter their code. So if you get too close to him, they, they try and melee you. So if you try and run out of bounds, not only do you take damage for being out of bounds, but when you get closer to the border, if you get cl too close to one of the bots, they knife you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So this is just I, I love this because this is like player ingenuity. This is somebody saying, look, I understand your game and you said you don't want to put this mode in here, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to like push it to the limits. He talks about how this game, this game mode doesn't run well because he's running so many custom codes and commands that it's that it's like too much for a generic portal uh, server to handle. Because basically the way you, the game works is you say, I want to play this type of custom game. And on the back end, EA spins up a, a server for your game mode to play in and anybody can join. And he thinks that those server instances are not strong enough to run all the code so it's it's a little glitchy and buggy uh, and it runs slow but it's insane to see somebody use the tools in this quite frankly broken game where i feel like portal is the only success they've had the portal mode and for somebody to use that and uh just create something crazy i i love it i this is like this is like speedrunners breaking a game this is uh kind of a cinderella story for a game that generally sucks but has this positive thing about it this is about crazy dev stories of oh this is how it works it's a train on their head type of mm. thing this is that's wild it. awesome story uh yeah that's that's super cool um almost makes me want to check it out but i guess there's <sighs> that that uh i don't want to download it i don't care if it's free i don't know i don't know if you were there i don't i don't think you were there for that week but there's a 10 10 hour free trial for uh game pass subscribers right now because there's a 10 hour free Battlefield 2042 trial as part of EA Play, which is part of Game Pass. Anyways, I played about an hour and a half of it and I was done. I, I didn't even enjoy playing against bots like in a in a let me start up my own match with a bunch of bots and me, which is one of my favorite ways to pass the time in any shooter. The game's just broken. They're bringing some new stuff in, but it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't run good. They just have too much borked in it. And it's a big shame, and it explains why today they announced that there's a huge shakeup coming for the Battlefield franchise. Uh, Will, you want to run through some of these highlights? Yes, I'm glad you brought this up because it kind of segues perfectly from uh, the fact that most people who play Battlefield 2042 love the portal mode because you can literally yeah. play the older games in it. And so, oh God, oh God. Autoplay I, videos I just did the same thing on the website. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, article God, from Chris Pariah. Per Pariah. How am I pronouncing things? Pereira and Eni Makuch, uh, two of my coworkers, on thegamespot.com. Uh, I, I don't know if they broke the story, but this is the story everyone was linking to on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not sure. Anyways, um, Dice has a sorry. There's a there's a paragraph I picked out, but it says additionally. Uh, anyways, there's a big shakeup uh, following uh, Battlefield. Um, sorry, I, I lost my place. Uh, D 
DICE uh, general manager Oscar Gabrielson uh, is leaving the company to pursue new endeavor outside of EA. The shakeup also includes Respawn's Vince Zampella, who is the co-founder of Respawn, uh, people who made Titanfall, Titanfall 2, and uh, Apex Legends, and uh, that Star Wars game, Jedi Fallen Order. Rogue Squatch in 3D. To the outcast, um, taking on a bigger role as a new over, overall boss of the Battlefield franchise, while Halo designer Marcus Leto, uh, famously for that, what was that game that wasn't very good? Uh, oh, is that that guy? The yes. weird cover bike thingy? Cover bike game that shut down pretty quick. Uh, he's building a new development team. They announced this a while ago because we had this conversation. He's uh, heading up a new development team in Seattle, uh, focused on injecting more storytelling into the Battlefield universe. I'm not sure if the... Disintegration. Sorry, uh, disintegration. Disintegration. Uh, I know they announced earlier the Marcus Leto Seattle thing. I don't think they said earlier that it was a storytelling in the Battlefield universe. And then Ripple Effect, this ties back in, the creators of the portal mode that people love so much... Uh, are officially developing a new Battlefield experience for Battlefield 2042 universe. Hopefully means uh, they uh, kind of get more rain over that because it feels like they were the ones who were doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and yeah. I'm not sure if that's by choice or by what was kind of forced on them. Uh, it says here, EA told GameSpot that Dice Ripple Effect and Letters in his studio will be working together to expand and improve Battlefield 2042 um so who knows maybe in a year battlefield 2042 is is a better well-run oiled machine um i can understand that they're positioning all this stuff as additive to battlefield 2042 a because they well, just launched it no 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 they are not i don't believe so this this is part of the battlefield universe so i i think the only thing they said was uh new games and experiences so ripple effect is developing a new battlefield experience in the 2042 universe yeah but the storytelling may be outside so th they are talking about multiple games here no no i know that i'm saying out of 2042 i'm saying they said immediate future those three studios oh, okay. are working together to expand upon and improve battlefield 20. i'm saying i, I mean, think that's quite frankly, it's, it's all hands on deck for that game because it's right tanking. so my, my point is i feel like they're putting that in there a, either one because that game just came out and they want people to know they're working on fixing all those problems to hopefully get players back and two i feel like they're just hey let's fix this game up as well as possible and then slowly drop those teams off to go work on like add the yeah. pe people back into those universe stuff so uh, i'm excited yeah. to see more universe stuff i hope literally maybe reading between the lines but i hope that's just battlefield bad company three um uh, I think so. I think the story thing really points to they're going to try and get back to a story mode. And uh, I think Bad Company 2, I don't know if Bad Company 1 had a story. Yeah, Bad Company 2, it. I feel like, yeah, so those are pretty much the only, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe those are the only Battlefield games with a true single player story because the other single player modes were like, we're going to jump you around between different characters and different experiences of the war. But those two games actually had uh, three had a character. I think oh, that's three right. Was all together. I never played three. It, it's it still jumped around a little bit, but yeah, it did have it did have story. Bad yeah. Company one and two campaigns are so good. Two good. starts off with the World War Two like thing. That's really neat. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, I, for me, uh, sorry, just to finish this thought, Bad Company multiplayer yeah. is where I got into Battlefield. So like, I'm very used to that stuff, and uh, and as well as 1942. Or sorry, 1943 and uh, Battlefield Bad Company Vietnam Vietnam is where I really got into Battlefield stuff. So that's like the style I really like for those games and the um, yeah. just how they're structured. So I I'm, I'm excited if that means they're they're working on another one of those. Yeah, I, I want to be excited about this because like we, we were talking about this in the Subpixel Discord join now uh, earlier today and <laughs> um. The Battlefield series is in a bad place. It's it's kind of where Far Cry is in terms of they keep putting out the same game over and over again. And there is not enough of a positive change, let alone really any change other than setting to grow the fan base. If anything, the fan base is is 
stagnant and now with 2042 it's dropped off um and, and i think they really need to like completely reboot this and quite frankly i'm not sure that i trust anybody at dice because they did such a poor job with battlefront one and two and they've been doing such a poor job with battlefield that they really just need to like hand this off to another studio or, or just clean house and, and i'm not saying that means people need to lose their jobs but i don't trust them with battlefield anymore um and so I look at this being like, OK, this is positive news. This is in the right direction. But then I start reading between the lines or I'm sorry, I start reading like literal lines in here. And it's things like this. There's so much there's so much like executive like gusto behind this that like I have a quote here in this article. EA CEO Andrew Wilson has said the company may eventually develop a free to play battlefield game. Um, and Zampella said the company is exploring every possibility as it looks to grow battlefield to help it reach its full potential. Uh, and I have one more quote here from the EA COO as a whole, we're all in on battlefield. It is one of the most important and valuable franchises in the industry. Collectively, we are out to unlock its enormous potential. This is a cash cow for them. And they're looking at call of duty decline and they're looking at battlefield and going, we should really make 12 Battlefield games a year. We should make mobile games. We should make free to play games. We should have a Battle Royale. We should have a Battlefield Warzone. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing inherently, but if you can't even put out your single triple A title every couple years and you put out 2042 and it sucks to high heaven, I don't trust you with 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 milk that cash cow and putting out other games. I just don't. You know, this this I my pessimism is screaming because this sounds like them going, guys, we have it turns out Battlefield is actually a really popular IP. We should really milk this. And that that makes me worried. I trust I trust Zampella. But uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Am, am I out of am I out of line here? I, I, I'm I trying not to be too pessimistic, but I'm reading this as like a huge marketing push of them being like, let's just really milk this. Let's just let's do it. Yeah, you know? I mean, I think it would be pessimistic if the games had been good up until now, but it's kind of mm -hmm. a track record. And I think yeah. I almost like, I don't think you're being pessimistic. I think you're being like optimistic that it's like, it could be good, but it, it probably won't be, you know? Uh, I think that's the only, like, if you were saying you think it's going to be good because of this, like, I would never call you pessimistic from what you said. I think you could only be optimistic in this situation because of their track yeah, and, and i and i think i think part of this puts me in a bad mood honestly is i don't think this headline is very genuine the headline is battlefield franchise undergoes major shakeup and that that is a much more negative headline that makes it sound like they're coming in and saying look we need to clean house a little bit we need to shake things up because the franchise is not in a good place and i don't think that's what this is i think this is them going in uh, this isn't a real headline. You know, I'm not good at writing headlines, but this is like EA announces they are going to expand Battlefield into multiple games and giant franchise for them to milk money from, you know? So this this is not them being like, hey, we're sorry, 2042 is a bad game. We're really going to, we're not just going to put out patches. We're really going to look at who's touching it, who's designing it, who's producing it. And we're going to shake all that up. This is them going, no, we're going to make more Battlefield games. Even more than just the, the main line, we're doing a whole bunch of spinoffs. Get ready, guys. And that's I don't think I, I think it is. It's ballsy of them to come out to this, to be like, hey, look, we know this new game is literally the worst launch in the entire series history. But guys, we've got 12 <laughs> more games coming for you. And it's like, what the heck? You know, it's it's yeah. it's this is a switcheroo. This is them trying to misdirect and don't fall for it. Put their feet to the fire. They need to make a good game. Battlefield's a great franchise. Make a good game. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to round out the news, um, Rebecca Kutaz. Kutaz is replacing Gabrielson as the, the general manager of DICE. Uh, she is formerly the um, studio director for Ubisoft An Annecy, uh, who, uh, whose first big game was Steep and Riders Republic of this year. They also helped on Division 2 and Splinter Cell game. So cool. She is replacing him uh and it seems like he'll be on for the rest of the year to uh transition her into the role, which is exciting. Um enough about Battlefield. Um well, do we do the Battlefield we... adjacent one? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about this. 
I, I put this on here because um, there's been a lot of talk about Titanfall, Titanfall 2, support for Titanfall, etc. Respawn came out with a note here today. I'm going to cherry pick from it. But basically, they said Titanfall is part of our DNA at Respawn. Uh, we've made the decision to discontinue new sales of the original Titanfall game starting today, and we'll be removing the game from subscription services on March 1st, 2022, which uh, that makes sense because that game came out in 2013. It was it was a launch on Xbox One, wasn't it? Or around then? So it's an old multiplayer only game, so it makes sense they're bringing down the multiplayer servers. It sucks. Um, however, this last couple sentences, I'll read these in full. Rest assured, Titanfall is core to Respawn's DNA, and this incredible universe will continue today in Titanfall 2 and Apex Legends and in the future. This franchise is a North Star for the caliber of experiences we will continue to create here at Respawn. That's, uh, I, I don't think I'm reading too far into this to say they're talking about making a new Titanfall game here. I'll say it again. Today in Titanfall 2 and Apex Legends and in the future, this incredible universe will continue. I, man, I, I want a Titanfall 3. Don't you want a Titanfall 3? I do. I'm, I'm, my mind is melting because Titanfall came out in 2014. And I feel like that game yeah. came out in like, Oh, nine. I don't know why. It was a little, but it, it was definitely a, 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 a Xbox One launch. But did uh, I play I'm it? Saying, I'm not, I must have around, played it on it PC. I, I thought I played it on the 360, but I must have played it on PC. Um, no. I don't think it was on 360. Oh, no, it was on 360, but I don't think I played it on 360. Oh. It was on Maybe PC, I too. Because I, I remember I... Steam. I remember I tried to play like the open beta on PC and they required that you have a 64 bit operating system. And I wasn't there yet. And I was a little mad. I was like, that's a little bit new tech. Like my computer's great, yeah. but I don't have a 64 bit, you know? I, yeah. I want, maybe I do have it for 360. I should check. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I would like more Titanfall. Titanfall two was great. The campaign was amazing. Uh, yeah. I've, I've never been a multiplayer so person, but I had a blast in both those multiplayers. And I think, honestly, I think the the Titanfall work they're doing in Apex Legends is really good. Um, like, they proved yeah, that they I, can really, really do that. And I, I always loved the world building of Titanfall, where it's like, we have these mercenaries and these, like, weird multi-military corporations, and they basically are fighting over these, these uh, colonial worlds. And the whole the whole idea is like you send in the ground troops, but then you also have titans that fall from orbit as like your shock shock troops, your shock tanks, and whew, that's so cool. That's it was cool. also cool because you played pilots, and there were grunts all over the map who yes. were like running around. So yes. you were like you weren't you weren't like the soldiers. You were like, oh, I'm special out the gate. I got to call yeah. in my stuff. Yeah. yeah, it was it was really. So I I I'm just excited because it feels like Titanfall's been up in the air. It felt like it got abandoned right after. Titanfall. There was a really good quote today, which is um, somebody somebody was talking about the news for Battlefield 2042, and they said, "Remember when they killed Titanfall 2 by releasing Battlefield like a week later, and now the creator of Titanfall is 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 taking over for Battlefield, and it's 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 really cool." Uh, so I I'm just excited for this. It it feels like between like the weird hack accusations and the constant DDoS. And Titanfall 2 getting killed off so quickly and Apex Legends being popular and then Jedi Fallen Order and people being like, where's Titanfall? And then the the one guy uh, who was like product manager or whatever at Titanfall and did the stream where he's like, guys, the robot games aren't happening anymore. It felt like Titanfall was in a very weird, uncertain place. So this I feel like this is a very strong week. Not not even a wink. This is them saying there will be more Titanfall. And I'm very excited about that. Yeah, there was also the that designer who moved back to respawn and said, "I'm returning to." It feels like where we all began, or something like that. Yes, so, like it makes yeah. me think Titanfall for sure. Yeah. Um. So from one uh unannounced game to another unannounced game, uh, John Yang, who's a senior design lead, uh, tweeted that he is joining Bungie as a senior designer design lead. Uh, working on an exciting unannounced game, Bungie creates incredible new worlds, blah, blah, blah. He's thrilled to be partnering with them. Uh, in the past, he was lead systems designer at Blizzard, uh, who, I mean, probably left there because of things. Um, not, not bad, not bad on him, but bad on 
on Activision Blizzard. Uh, uh, but oh, it says oh, he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> I just didn't want oh, people okay. to think. Okay. We don't know why he left. We don't know why he left. Don't name Good any man. characters after He's John Yang. Now. Just saying. He's a bungee uh, now. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, just here on his Twitter, it says he worked on WoW, Diablo, Hearthstone, uh, and unannounced games. So that's exciting. Um, I think not that Bungie's efforts are wasted on Destiny, but I feel like like getting possibly having this other team or whatever this is working on something that uh, isn't destiny 2 it could be destiny adjacent it could be anything uh is neat I, i'd kind of like to see where they they take this sort of thing although it's probably just gonna be a destiny mobile game or something but uh yeah i, I kind of wanted to i put this in here because i wanted to kind of i wanted to take a quick trip to speculation nation and um it there i don't i don't want to think about I don't want to ask you, what do you think it is? I want to ask you, what do you want it to be? The next Bungie project, it could be anything. What do you want it to be? I don't know. Like, part of me is like, either, man. I, I want it to be like. Honestly, I think what they really excelled at was single player experiences. Not that their multiplayer was bad, but they are trying really hard to tell some cool stories in Destiny and they just get hidden so much by bad mechanics, bad, bad, like flow, bad, bad player progress. And I want them to just go back and be like, no, we're just going to tell a really solid like 10, 15 hour single player FPS campaign story in a new world or even like a Destiny adjacent like I'm all for that. Give me that streamlined story experience right in my veins. Yeah. I want that. I was thinking, where do I want really good shooting? Um, oh, yeah. And yeah, mostly, I think I just want, uh, like, uh, basically what you said, word for word. And I want another dark, stormy Halo 3 ODST. Like, I, I, I thought that was such a oh, great more, experience. More grunt based. Like, grunt based, not, yeah. not your super soldier. Like you're yeah. just in the middle of this world that's happening around you. I think that would be really cool. Um, oh, no. Look, I this is going to sound very generic, but honestly, the more I think about it, I think it would be really good if there was more of like a Call of Duty 1 and 2 grounded World War II experience and Bungie did it. That'd be cool. That'd be good. I don't know why it's on yeah. my mind, but I was thinking like a dinosaur shooter would be cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I think I think Bungie is so sci fi fantasy weird that I think if they do any other sci fi fantasy, it's not going to be good enough. You know, it'd be good. It'd be really battle good. That, they could do a battle royale pretty good. Or if oh man, if Bungie made a Warhammer game. Like a like a high fantasy Warhammer, like not well. not necessarily Space Marine, but one of those cool factions. Two months ago, this is not a bit. Two months ago, I had a dream that I was playing what? the new Bungie game. What? I'm slowly remembering it. It was it was a four person co op shooter, but it was also it was also like a little bit of a battle royale because it was a bunch of four person squads, but it was also a lot of PVE. And now that I think about it, it was kind of like a. It, don't take this too literally, but kind of like an FPS MOBA where you are trying to farm in this location. But at the same time, you're occasionally coming up against enemy squads. And it just had this like real grimy, like scorn meets destiny feel to it. And it felt really good. The shooting was so good. And it was like these matches of like hour to two hour <laughs> matches where you're just like, all right, guys, let's go in. Let's grind some hour loot. Let's get out. Long like like dark zone-esque experience like Ooh. tarkov but also more battle royale in a way and it was where it's not like you're trying to win it's just like you're trying to get in and get out but there's other squads patrolling and there's other other player squads you're fighting against and it just felt because it was always and it felt like a moba just because of those moments where you're like i don't know how much of a moba you've played i haven't played much either but there are always these moments in a moba where you're like we're grinding ai 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 okay it's time for a fucking team fight you know what a team fight is in mobas 
Okay, so so MOBAs is like, let's say you got 4v4, right? But there's all these AI. So like the first 20, 30 minutes of the match is, is you just like fighting the AI and you're and you're buffing up. And every now and then, you know, one of the other enemy team may get out of position and you kill them. But then a team fight is when like for whatever reason, and it, honestly, it's one of the best things about MOBAs. There are very few good things about MOBAs is the <laughs> team fight, which is when I know I'm trying to be visual here, but you got your you got your teams on each side of the map and they're poking and prodding each other. But neither wants to commit to a fight because it's too it's too much because when you fight, you tend to like lose a little bit of gold. You lose a little bit of experience. It sets you back. It also like killing an enemy player gets you a lot of experience. So they, they say, like, don't feed the other team by dying to them too easily. So basically everybody, nobody wants to fight. No, no player to player wants to fight. But then there's a moment where they're like, oh, this guy's alone. Let's start fighting him. And then the other team gets involved. And all of a sudden, both teams are literally just like throwing everything they've got at each other. And it becomes this giant 4v4 melee. And it's just like, pop, 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 pop. Like you've been building 30 minutes, all your experience just for this moment of like, pop, 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 pop. Like everybody's popping off. And that's what it felt like in this dream was this moment where it's like, yo, you got loot, you got loot. Yo, there's the enemy team. What do we, what do we do? What do we, oh, it's popping off. It's popping off. It's popping off. And we're like throwing <laughs> nades and we're like, go over to like, I'm down, come get me, come get me, come get me. That's what I want the next Bungie game to be. Wild. Absolutely wild, oh this prediction God. for me and Gibson. I, um, oh. you kind of made me think, I don't want to go too far on this, uh, but I would like, uh, in any battle royale where there's teams i would love a percentage chance that when a team is the last team there's like a percentage chance that the game makes another ring and all four of them are on different teams now and they have to fight it out oh uh, but it can't be every single time because people will plan for it it's just a random yeah. time that it just is like be the last one you're like what uh, yes like like really it good. kind of reminds me of of like the cool the cool concept in board games nowadays is the hidden traitor but one of my favorites is the unknown traitor like like there's a game i forget what it's called but i played it once and let's say there's five people in the game and at the start of the game there's six slips of paper you draw and one of them says traitor so there's a possibility of a traitor in the game but oh. you don't even know if there is a traitor <laughs> That's pretty. So good. the whole time you're pointing fingers, and when I played the one time, by the end of it, we realized, oh, there is no traitor. Let's all work together. But it took the entire game. It was fantastic. That's that, like, that's such a good idea. It's like is like small chance of chaos. Love it. That's like that. I won't say what it is for fear of spoilers, but there's a board game that we were playing, and it and in the real version of the board game, there's always someone who's a traitor, and in this version, they didn't put a traitor in. So you, I had died and I knew yes. the answer, but you and Karen uh, were yelling at each other saying, you have to be the tra traitor and a hundred percent believing the other person was a traitor because that's how the we other the game only two works. Left. And you were the only two people yeah. left. And you guys kept being like, Ian, you kept being like, <laughs> the best part is because you both were so confident because you had to be right. And so you were just like, Karen, I know you're the traitor. Just like, what are you talking? And she would be like, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> It's just and then at the end it was revealed <laughs> there was no traitor the game lied to us oh it's so good <laughs> it's amazing oh very good i feel i feel like bungie could do some incredible things they have that there are so many elements of their game design that are incredible but there's also so many elements that are just bad and are constantly and continuously bad and they have had multiple chances to fix and they just haven't and i know that's a little bit more aggressive than you want me to say but it's like <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe it is time to put destiny on a shelf for a bit or or kick it off to the b team and let the a team have some fun with something brand new you know yeah totally. i think that's a good idea um i think we're gonna call it there uh only other quick hits here there's a new marvel online mmo was announced at an investor investor show gta trilogy definitive edition patch coming out to uh, add that cloud cover and fix that rain Farming Simulator Good. 22 breaks series records of 1.5 million sold in the first week. Uh, this is after them. They're, I believe they're self-publishing or they, they switched to yeah publishing their own games, which is uh, kind of incredible that they did. Let me just read. Increable. I'm right. Hey, um, you ever get guilty? Yeah. When first you haven't played publishing. Pokemon for a while. Like, I didn't play Pokemon at all today yet, and I actually feel like I really need to check in on my Pokemon. I you know? I haven't played since wh whenever because I can't do anything. So <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll play tomorrow. Folks, thank you. I'm going to start the music, don't I?
folks thank you so much for tuning in that was fun uh we don't often get these just ian and will shows uh because i hate you but uh it was a pretty good pretty good show today uh, i'm excited to play more pokemon so definitely folks check our twitter uh probably tomorrow night i want to say probably around nine depends on how long super mario party goes uh definitely check out i don't know GameSpot's twitch but uh starting at noon pacific tomorrow uh they are doing extra life on the twitch so definitely go cool. check that out and donate or uh or uh talk in the chat or don't have some fun or don't you don't have to donate i'm not making you donate or don't donate or don't uh i will be on at 7 p.m eastern uh so definitely uh come check me out i will be playing super mario party superstars i actually ordered uh a uh ethernet adapter for my switch so <laughs> i had no lag mm. uh, because the ethernet adapter i had just doesn't work for the switch so i ordered oh. one that does work apparently and it'll be here tomorrow um i think we've got uh saturday we've got more pokemon sunday possibly more pokemon next tuesday more pokemon <laughs> and next thursday i'm oh, sorry next wednesday is local chat we will be doing uh predictions for the game awards so definitely tune in for that i yeah. believe we will either have chris uh from save data on or possibly kyle from a sub pixel uh Chris is getting back to me, and then I can tell Kyle to F off or join in. We could actually have four people. I don't care. Folks, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all next week.